Well, those are okay on it. Let's see what else is. I see three things. You filmed that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Howdy, weekend ranchers. We're back. This is actually Monday after the weekend. So it was very windy. We got a lot of stuff done at the ranch, but what we wanted to go over with you was a number of tools that we're actually using that are kind of new. We've had a chance to explore three different types of tools from weed whacker to pole saw and also the chainsaw. Uh, you've seen some of them used before. On Saturday, we found ourselves working on the east or in the western side of the property in a kind of sloped area trying to clear the fence line. And the fence line is overgrown with a lot of trees, a lot of saplings, a lot of grass, tons of briars, and everything that you don't want to be playing with, including poison ivy. What I wanted to go over is kind of review each one of these things, just from our experiences of using them, show them kind of why we have them. They are for a specific purpose, um, and kind of let you know what we think about them so far. Ultimately, this will be a lot easier if we had a mulcher, hired it out, had some people come around and do a line. We may even do some of that later on but portions of it you just can't reach with big mechanical equipment and so we have this to go ahead and help us do that so let's go ahead and go through each one of them one by one and then we'll, we'll see it in action kind of give you our thoughts about what we liked and what we didn't like and why we have it all right first item is the weed whacker this weed whacker is a steel fs91 weed whacker it's a little bit bigger it's one of the larger ones they had there they had some smaller ones that were just a little bit less horsepower but they didn't have the handlebar and that's the part that we really wanted about this is that we can have more control um, especially because we're going to be getting into different types of blades but we'll get into that a little bit so the fs91 is a little bit bigger it's a little bit more horsepower typical things it's just a normal weed whacker we have the screw top just for your oil and gas mixture it's actually a four cycle engine which is actually kind of interesting your normal pull start and you've got your bulbs up top um, the reason we liked it is because of this handle section. It comes with an actual really handy shoulder pad. You can rest it on you, it takes a lot of the weight. So the handle's really nice, you're able to use it. It's got the trigger with the safety. You can undo this, twist the handles where you want. Underneath is also some bolts, you can slide it out to adapt it to whatever you are. And this of course adjusts, so we like that having that here. The other thing that we got it for was having just this head. This different head is interchangeable, so we got it with the twine, uh, the string, the trimmer that can go around. We decided to use it in this case with this blade. We also got another blade, which is a saw blade. Um, this actually has a 16 inch cutting radius, a little over 16 inches, so it's really helpful. I think these things retail, if I remember right, around 350-ish or so. Um, it does have some capability to have detachable heads, so you can you can use the same motor with various different other attachments to it. Um, I'm not really bothered about it. So, so far it's just got this. We'll show you some of this in action so that way you can kind of see it. And we want to tell you about what we thought about it as we used it. Grant! Hey Grant, what did we put on it? Spinning saw blade. It looks like it needs a guitar. All right. Wreak havoc, Grant, wreak havoc. As you can see from the video we just watched, it worked pretty good. It was actually really good for Grant to use. He really enjoys the strap that we we're able to put on there, um, and it allowed him a little bit more control. But there were a few things that were kind of frustrating to use, um, especially I think it was with more of the blade that we have here. The blade itself isn't good for super thick pieces of trees. 
um, the trunks. If they get any larger than about an inch or two inches, it just didn't seem to cut very well. And even on some of those, if Grant found out that if you went up to it and tried to gently be with it, it didn't actually cut the tree, it just kind of gnawed on it a lot. So he had to actually go in a more sweeping motion, hit it, and it would cut through some of those things. But bigger things it just struggled with. And that's where that saw blade attachment would be better. Some of the things that we, because of our own inexperience, struggled with a little bit was just interchanging the head here. To get this off, we had to actually, let me move this over. We had to take the, the normal spool line here off and insert this with the blade. And at the beginning, we didn't know how to do it. We weren't sure if it was some bolt up here, which isn't the case. Um, but there is a hole sitting right here that you just go ahead and stick the little, it comes with a rod, you stick it in there and it holds the cup assembly. And then it was all about, well, how do you get everything off? Well, it ended up just being as simple as just twisting it with your hand. So ultimately, it's not that complex. It just took a little bit of thinking and getting used to it. Um, that was one thing I think that was just the most aggravating, I guess, at the very beginning, trying to get that blade on. But now that we know, it's no big deal. So all in all, I'd buy it again. It worked for what we wanted. And I think if we just changed the blade out to something bigger, I think Grant, as you saw in the video, would have had an easier time cutting some of the things that we ended up cutting. So thumbs up for me. I'd do it again. All right, second on the list was the Remington Maverick. This is the pole saw. The pole saw is really meant to try and get those tall branches, things are out of the way. What we thought it would be most useful for is we have a lot of big bushes, a lot of things that are crazy, the briars are growing through them, and you can't reach the actual stumps inside. And so we needed something a little bit longer reach. So this is the Remington. It has a seven foot long reach. We're able to get to places that we wouldn't normally be able to get to with some actual shears. Typical basic motor just like the Weed Whacker. You got your choke control, engine control, you got your pull start, just a two cycle 25cc motor. Typical kind of things with the trigger. Safety, depress, and then this up here is when it's running, you kill it by switching the switch over. And that goes ahead and kills it. So you can cut it at any time. This handle can be located in different places. We actually removed it from right here where the balance wasn't there and we put it up here. So that way it allowed it to be able to be handled better. At this end, you have the oil reservoir. It's self-oiling and of course the chain came off when we were working so we haven't put it on yet. But very simple to use. Just add your gas, add your oil and everything seems to work fine. So, all in all, wasn't too bad. Let's see it in action and kind of see what things we used it for. things about this that were just you know things you want to be aware of when you get it was that on the chainsaw portion when you're starting this you have seven feet from the back to the front and then sometimes when Charlotte first started trying to start it this is resting in the ground and so as you first get it started you start making sure it's running this starts kicking up through the dirt and gets everything into here um, so try and keep it up or rest it on something on the bar here and then that way it keeps it out of the ground as you try and start it. It also helps with the leverage issue. One of the other things that we noticed was that this gets clogged. Um, you'll find especially a lot of stuff gets jammed into here. And so it was difficult at some points trying to deal with getting all of this stuff out. You have to take the cap off, you can clean it. But just be aware that this can clog, especially if it gets in the dirt or in just uh, loose briar-like viney things can get sucked in there and wrapped. So. It isn't super ideal for that, that would be more the weed whacker, but all in all it did pretty well. We just now got to put the chain on. So, otherwise, 
you know, it's only 180 bucks, 190 bucks. You know, would I buy it for my normal house? Probably not, to be honest with you. But having a ranch, I can see having it, especially when you don't want to be in the briars. So, all in all, pretty good. All right, third item. Third item is a chainsaw. You saw us use this in the second episode that we have. Um, this is the MS-271 from Steel. This is not the commercial grade. This is one that we thought, well, commercial grade's a lot of money, so we got something a little bit smaller, but it's a typical chainsaw. It's the Farm Boss. Um, it's 18 inch bar. It's typical teeth, I love having these. The claws up front helps get a lot of leverage. You got your typical break right here. Otherwise, it's really simple, actually. This is the oil, you flip it up, turn it around, and you can check your bar oil. Very simple, very clean. I don't have to use another tool. Over here you have your, your fuel. Same thing, give it a quarter turn. Here's your fuel, you check it, you're done, you flip it down. Starting it is very similar to a lot of others. You've got your choke down here, you would pull it, kick it up. Once it starts, you're good. You turn it off, it goes off. So just pull start. But let's see this one in action on Saturday. So we showed you a little bit of those clips, us taking down some trees. Those, those trees weren't very big, as you can tell. There's a lot of them that are big, but there's a lot of them that are not very big. So what do we think of this one? This one, I really like. I really like this saw. Um, it, it's just, it's a beast. You know, you're gonna start it, you're gonna work it all day. I wouldn't worry about it. It's super easy to use, fill it. Um, no gripes. We looked at the Husqvarna, it was a little bit cheaper. This one ran about 400 bucks. So, I think it was great. I wouldn't ask for anything more than that. I first thought that the 18 inch bar might be a little small. It wasn't. Um, I'm not gonna cut down something that's that big that if, if I did, I think I'd be getting myself into trouble more than I would be smart. So there is one gripe <coughs> that I have, and it's not that it's the product has anything wrong. The product is 12 and a half pounds, right? So as you're going in there and you're working on this thing for a while, you start feeling it. now. I know I'm huge, I'm buff, I'm ripped, right? Because I work at a computer all day. That's what all of us guys are. But I don't want to wield this thing all day long. When we start doing future lines and clearing these things, I don't want to take this guy. I want to take a smaller one. So I think I'm going to go back to the store and buy a smaller chainsaw that's a little bit lighter, a lot lighter, smaller bar, because I'm not going to be taking anything out huge, and just do that. So nothing against the steel. The steel has been great. I wouldn't complain, but for something like this, when you're down on the ground a lot, I'm going to get something smaller. So those are our three products. We talked about the weed whacker, the trimmer, or the tree trimmer, and the chainsaw. So that's what we're using to clear a bunch of lines. We're going to keep going. We hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to be back next week. We did do some things with the hog enclosure. We're almost done with that. We just have a little bit more, and then we'll have a video showing what we think about it and mainly, it's the things they don't tell you. So until then, we'll see you next week.